After almost two years of Overwatch 2, we finally have a new DPS hero, and right after a crazy season that changed the entire feel of the game. Add that on top of a hefty Wrecking Ball rework and a few seasons worth of power creep, and this new season is looking wild. So let's go over the best and worst damage heroes in this DPS tier list for Season 10. If you're looking to rank up on your favorite heroes, check out the link in the description below to get access to a Game Leap membership. There are tons of guides and courses that can level up your game and help you get better, faster. Make sure to check it out and enjoy the video. Overall, even though the low tier DPS are objectively worse in almost every situation, every hero does have a at least something strong to play for, even D tier Junkrat. By design, he's not the type of hero who can ever be in the meta for a long time before things start to get frustrating. The first thing that comes to mind after dying to Junkrat is usually, how did that hit me, or no way there was a trap there. But the changes he's gotten don't address how frustrating it is when he's strong, and they also don't make him feel better to play. His concussion mines are really strong right now, but they're much less impactful without the ability to one-shot, which is again super frustrating. The good news is that he's not so bad that you can't get a decent win rate with him, but the bad news is that you'll have to roll the dice on the maps you get, since Junkrat only has a few maps where he's decent to throughout the whole thing. Even King's Row, which is probably his best map, becomes a lot less favorable on third. And even when you do build your ultimate, it still hasn't gotten any buffs to help him keep up with the Season 9 changes. This patch, they even fixed the bug that allowed the Riptide to heal from the global regen passive. But it's best not to underestimate him, because a lot of things can happen in-game. Especially if you've got the right choke point to spam, or the perfect flank onto the backline. Moving up to C tier and leaving Junkrat behind as the only D tier hero, we've got Bastion. He's not as map dependent as Junkrat, but it can be pretty hard to make him work without a dedicated shield tank to help out. His turret form is really effective, but it's easy to bait. You can still punish over aggressive players or zone a whole team for 6 seconds, but between those forms, there's not much you can give to your team besides basically another tank to take care of, just without the ability to defend themselves. He's not the type of DPS who needs buffs though, he's just one of the few heroes who switch between being super strong during their engages and super weak during their downtime. When combined with Symmetra and Reinhardt and fast paced rush comps that can cross crazy distances super fast, he's more than good enough, but there's also a lot of coordination needed for that. Otherwise, the best you can do is hope that the enemy team doesn't know where you are and aren't ready to counter you, so you can hop on the flank and beam down targets for quick picks. At the top of C tier, it's Torbjorn. He's actually very strong in the right circumstances, but he's both a counter hero and a hero easily countered. Despite having no fall off on his primary fire slugs, he struggles a lot on long range maps, mostly because a lot of them have strong high grounds. His turret has also been a lot less useful, even against flankers. Most of them can spam hard enough now that they can destroy it easily. There's also not as much of a need to hard dive anymore. The one thing Torb is really good at dealing with, tanking the pressure with overload while having a turret blasting from the sidelines. As it is with any high spam DPS, he is good enough at pressuring tanks, but outside of Winston and Ball, he's not going to be creating much of a meaningful advantage. Alright, now for B tier, which is absolutely jam packed with heroes. Out of the 7 heroes in this tier, Symmetra starts off at the bottom, but compared to how she was before, it's not a bad place to be. Especially considering that the most recent change she got was a partial revert to some much needed buffs after Season 9. Her damage hasn't gotten better, with only 60 DPS at level 1, but at least now that's not less than Moira, it's just the exact same. Although it seems like she should be a lot worse, her teleporter health went up by 100, just enough to make it a waste of time to kill, and even if you're planning to destroy it before it gets value, you just can't do it fast enough, making Symmetra's teleporter utility drastically stronger. Her turrets have also gotten better, although only by 10 HP and 5 DPS. DPS, so it's really the teleporter carrying her to staying relevant. Next is Farah. She's still good, but she also still doesn't have a foothold in the meta at all. She's only better than Symmetra because spamming rockets is more reliable than spamming photon shots, but really not by much. When it comes to dealing damage and getting picks, Farah does a great job, but playing aggressively as Farah is a lot more risky than most other heroes have it. You do have a lot of mobility to push forward and kite back, but even with the increased fire rate, her damage can be inconsistent, which makes it hard to come back from a disadvantage. Her reload is also just long enough to be annoying at 1.5 seconds. Farah is more of a duelist than a spammer now, but she's just a bit too slow and definitely too vulnerable. Her hitbox is massive to the point where most tanks can force her out alone, even from decent ranges. A hitbox decrease would definitely help her a lot, but it's been a long time since any hitbox got changed. Projectiles have just gotten bigger. Next we've got Reaper. It's not a great time for him, since tanks right now are either diving all over the place or pretty much unkillable, even to his tank busting damage up close. He's in a good state with Death Blossom clutching up often, and Wraith Form is one of the best abilities in the game ever since it got its speed increased a while back. A get out of jail free card gives you a lot of playmaking potential, however, he can be very limited by the enemy team comps, and by his own. Lucio is pretty important for helping him contest the front line without getting spammed out quickly, and he needs tank buffs from Zarya or Malga to really engage hard. You can always go for the teleported flank, but Reaper is just so easy to mark. Even with the instant shadow step teleport, he sets up very slowly, so on maps where you can't safely pressure the front line, the game can feel pretty tough. In the middle of B tier, it's Mei. She's definitely a lot better than Reaper overall, but she has the same kind of problems. The only thing she does better than other DPS is her ice wall and slow. Not only is it hard to force the fights in close range, but most maps, especially all the new ones, just don't have a lot of choke points that can be blocked with ice wall. Not every hero needs to get value out of all their abilities to be strong, but Mei is noticeably a lot weaker when she doesn't constantly constantly block off important sightlines and rotations. But being a B tier hero, her damage and self sustain are decent, and even though she's got a slow icicle fire rate, she is able to 2 tap headshot, and even just her normal spam is really effective with how massive the icicles are. Moving on to Hanzo, he's got even greater range and damage output by far, and that's despite losing his one shot headshot in season 9. But he is really easy to kill for most dive heroes. His arrows are devastating, but he really struggles to hold space effectively since he only has his short leap to fall back with. In spam mirrors though, he's a top pick. You can win any duel with storm arrows even at long distance, and Sonic Arrow is a top level utility that can always give 
you and your team the edge. Closing in on the top of B tier, we have Widowmaker. She doesn't work on every map, and she only has 200 HP, but she is insanely powerful to the point that you need to either hide away from her sightlines or set up a dive to stop her. Even if she's a lot weaker on the more fast-paced game modes, she's impressive enough on Escort and Hybrid. It's also not the biggest issue to only have 200 HP when she has the best range in the whole game, and can only be countered by a dive. Hitting your shots isn't even too hard with the bigger bullets, so you don't have to be an aim god to get value, although it definitely helps a lot. And now for the top of B tier, it's Sombra. She got a nerf this patch, but it's such a small one that it really doesn't matter. The upfront virus damage is great burst, so Sombra is still a great pick for contesting solo angles and snipers like Hanzo and Widow, but even with a really effective playstyle, she still has a pretty long downtime. So hopefully the enemy team doesn't realize how easy it is to both force Sombra out and then chase her, because she's definitely not as elusive as she used to be. Now for A tier, and for the hero we've all been waiting for, Venture. They're definitely not as insane on launch as Sojourn was, and based off their kit, they're not as consistently viable, but the amount of burst and sustain in their kit is crazy. High impact abilities and a surprisingly consistent primary fire makes for a super flexible hero. They're not uncounterable though. Under pressure, it's really hard to make a quick escape because of the cast time of Burrow, and Drill Dash doesn't make you invincible or anything, you can take a lot of damage despite the bonus shield health. They're definitely not an easy win, but the amount of value you can get by taking duels or setting up a massive burrow blast underneath the backline is more than enough for a launch hero, and Tectonic Shock is a great ultimate. It can be blocked for sure, but it's explosive enough to pick up kills before you start getting matched. Next up in A tier is a classic Soldier 76 pick. He's kind of barely hanging onto A tier, but his damage and range are as good as ever. He's just not as resistant to dive as some of the S tier heroes. Truthfully, his 171 DPS keeps him relevant. Top aimers can do so much with him and at all times. Other high output damage heroes don't have that high fire rate that lets Soldier beam anyone crossing his sightlines instantly. And although Visor can feel pretty lackluster at times, it is a great tool to defend against a dive which can be extra hard to deal with otherwise. Now for Ash, who trades sustained damage for more utility, but even so, her spam is crazy good. Her reload is lightning fast, so when you get forced away from an angle, you can start shooting again right as you peek. Individually loading bullets is actually uniquely powerful. Her dynamite is also better than ever with a DPS passive, and Bob sticks around quite well even in a damage heavy meta. There may be a lot of spam being traded, but ideally you're shooting actual players and not 1200 HP Bob. Even when he gets blasted instantly, you're forcing the enemy to shoot him as long as he's placed in a good spot. Her coach gun is kind of hit or miss though. It's better than nothing for surviving a push, but it's also very counterable. Ash can't do much when enemies are on top of her, but she does have enough abilities and range to stop that from happening. And now for the top of A tier, despite having one of the worst bugs ever at the start of the season, it's Genji. Not being able to climb after double jumping is crazy, but when he's not plagued by spaghetti code somehow only affecting him, he's refreshingly consistent. He's not known for his poke, but it's amazingly strong especially when he can quickly take high ground angles that no other heroes can, and his 15 meter dash makes it really easy to transition to diving in and forcing an advantage. There are a lot of things that counter Genji for sure, but most of them are really only good for just that, and it makes their team weaker for it. Playing Genji for his consistent presence in the fight and the ability to quickly collapse and blow up a target is the way to go, so even when the enemy team resorts to the most evil composition you've ever seen, you can still run the game. Now for S tier, the four top heroes who just can't be matched, and the first hero is the one who matches everything, Echo. She's pretty much better than Genji in almost every way, although she is easier to force out since she has to fly away, whereas Genji can deflect for even more pressure, but she more than makes up for it with her insane burst and spam at range, which makes her especially strong before the fight. Her stickies on only 6 seconds makes her so effective at poking out heroes who are setting up to go in, or even supports who are just trying to hold a position. Although she can get tapped out of the sky by a lot of heroes, she does need to be constantly flying and peeking to keep the pressure on, which is one of the reasons why she's drastically better than Farah. But moving on to one of the heroes that can reliably tap her out of the sky, Cassidy has both control of the skies and control of the flanks and control of pretty much anything within 25 meters. Unlike other short range heroes, Cass has just enough range to contest most positions, and combat roll's 75% damage reduction makes it really easy to quickly rotate or quickly dip back behind cover when you start getting too low. He's really only worse on the super long range maps, like Havana and Circuit, where the objective is almost always out in the open and there aren't too many good rotations to set up close enough, but he's still not bad. Every time you have high noon, you become the ultimate infinite range zoner. It's not the most impactful ultimate, but his upfront damage is so good that he doesn't even need more playmaking in his kit. Onto the top two, to pretty much no surprise, even with the tank matchup switching from season to season, Sojourn is still top dog for both playmaking and damage output. Her railgun is so fundamentally strong that it fits in with any composition. There's always a need for 130 damage burst from any range. Even though she doesn't have as obvious a chokehold on the meta as before, she's totally overrepresented in the DPS hero pick rates, and she's not even limited to the hitscan and projectile role. In this patch, she's even more favored as the number one hero drops a little bit more from the untouchable must pick tier, but definitely not by much. Number one in S tier is still Tracer. Yeah, she's not a total must pick anymore, but she's clearly still the best overall DPS. The nerfs were definitely warranted, but not impactful enough to send Tracer down from the number one spot, let alone S tier. An extra second on recall means she can't fight as often, but forcing a recall and then killing her afterwards is as difficult as ever. The more important change that actually affects how strong she is has to be the pulse bomb size nerf, but it's just back to how it was before, or at the very least just a skill shot as it should be. Tracer definitely felt a lot better with the pulse bomb easier to stick, but her insane performance is thanks to her buttery smooth kit that flows together perfectly, and 6 damage per bullet of course. She'll likely stay as strong as she is for a long time, although whenever any nerfs hit a hero as popular as Tracer, even if they don't do much, it'll give people a reason to try out new heroes, like A tier Venture for example. That's it for the DPS tier list for season 10. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.